Now, it, this was very stressful because what happened was, um, so basically I prepared this like a week ago or whatever, and I was kind of a little bit like arrogant about it in the sense that I just figured it was like all good and everything. And then Stephanie was like, oh, do you want to show it to me or whatever? And I was like, yeah, all right, I'll just, you know, like last night, just like before we're going to bed. And then basically I showed her it and then she just like had that, that look on her face, you know, of just disappointment. You know, it was that same look that she had when I, when I met her in person for the first time after we met on the dating app. No, I'm just joking. She actually, she actually really was really attracted to me. Um, um, yeah. And I, and I said to her that day, actually, when we first met, I said that we would make nice offspring together, you know, with our genes and everything. We had a good genetic, um, you know, but basically, um, pre-Christianity, pre exactly. But basically, um, so what was it? Oh, yeah, so she was disappointed. And long story short, I um, just had to, like, just burn it to the ground and just start it all over again. <laughs> but now it's really good, though, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, exactly. I promise you, I will never preach a sermon that was not approved by Stephanie beforehand. Okay, so just, all right. So let's start with Romans verse uh, two, 12 verse two, right? Do not, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That's, I feel like that is the big point of this whole chapter. You know, like up until now, Paul's been getting into like really like deep theological doctrine and um, now he's kind of just getting practical, right? Yeah. And, and you know, you were just talking about like, um, you know, pre-Christianity or, you know, when Stephanie and I met, but we did become disciples like five months into our, you know, dating. And then we got married about four months later. But I remember, you know, just having my own kind of personal experience. I'll just do it very quickly, not like a long testimony, but essentially long story short was, I was just reading through the Bible, I was reading through the four Gospels. I'm really shortening it down, but just in the Gospel of John, it just it just dawned on me, it just dawned on me that that, that it just dawned on me that everything everything in it was true, right? And I, I remember just feeling that in my heart that that the Word of God really was true, and that Jesus really was who He said He was, and and it, and it cut me to the heart, you know. And and I remember just. I remember having that feeling kind of like, wow, like I'm, you know, that's so lucky of other people, you know, that Jesus died for them. And I remember just kind of having that feeling finally just saying, well, you know what, he died for you too, you know? And I just remember just kind of claiming that in my mind and, and really just kind of repenting just of my, of my, I mean, I was a nightmare before I became a disciple. So it was not hard for me to realize that I was a sinner, you know? I mean, I did everything, everything wrong, you know, um, before I was a disciple. And then I got baptized shortly thereafter and, um, but then we were in this kind of weird stage because like, like I was now a baptized disciple and Stephanie like followed along like another six weeks later, but then we had a really hard time finding a church and like we were really trying, but it's like really hard to find a good church. So I don't know if you guys like realize that you guys are very blessed here. And like, it was one of those things that I said like one time when I was here too, but it's not like, it's not like you guys reached out to me. Nobody here gets any evangelism points, okay? <laughs> not, there's no fruit for anyone, okay, because I found you guys because I was just looking for actual Bible believers and I was going to these other churches and people were saying all kinds of crazy stuff. But I think a lot of this has to do with this issue here because it's kind of like, I feel like Romans 12 is kind of like, okay, now you've been saved, right? You've been justified by faith, right? You, you're, no, you're released from the law, like we said, right? Now you're in the spirit, but it's like, now, now what? What is our life supposed to look like from this point forward? And, and that really is what we call like sancti sanctification. Right, and, and this is the difference. He's saying there's two contrasting things here. One is being conformed to the world, right? Or opposed to that, it's being transformed by the renewal of your mind, okay? So the idea of being conformed to the world, it's almost like phrased here, like almost like that's the natural thing still, right? And it kind of makes sense because we were in the world. We were in the world for, I was in the world for 27 years. I, I knew how to conform to the world, you know? Like I remember even when I was like 10 years old, um, I, I like learned how to play football and because I was studying the kids and I saw that the cool kids were playing football and I had to learn how to play football, you know? And I remember even in college too, like seeing these kids in a fraternity and I was like, though, I want these people to be my friends. Yeah. And within like six months, they were all my friends. You know, it was just this kind of, just this people pleaser kind of chameleon. I could win people over easily in the world. I know, I knew the game, I knew the standard, I knew the rules and I could play it. You know, I had 27 years 
to play the game. That's why I went to law school. You know, I wanted that status. I needed that, I needed that approval. Now this is totally opposite becoming a disciple, right? Because now you're like really weird in the world, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's a bizarre change. So he's saying now you need to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So first of all, that's also kind of making it clear that it's not like, I think Tim, Tim made references either in his sermon or just with me when we were talking, but Tim said something along the lines of like, you know, it's not like you get saved and then you just like sit around like waiting till you die, you know? Like a lot of people think that's the case though. You know, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I said, I went up to the altar call, right? I said the prayer and I'm going to heaven. But it's like, he's talking about a, a, a daily process and, and transformation, that's like a metamorphosis, right? That's a change in personality. So the question really becomes, first of all, well, what, okay. What does he mean by being transformed? Like, what are we being transformed into, right? And um, yeah. I think that the answer there lies in 2 Corinthians 3.18, oh, where he said, and we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Amen. Right. So you see where that's going. It's Jesus. We're, we're being transformed into the image of Jesus now. Currently, we're getting a head start on that. So this is like a really exciting thing for us. This isn't like, oh, yeah, you're just good. Like God's like, hey, I just want you to know you're going to heaven. Just, you know, like Tim, like I was saying, the Tim said, just relax. No, this is like a true metamorphosis becoming more like the image of Jesus. And then Romans 8, 29 even says for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So that's God's purpose. That's God's eternal purpose for those who are disciples to be conformed to the image of his son, right? So that's the contrast. We're either conformed to the world or we're conformed to the image of his son. And just like many things, there's no opt out. You're, you're conforming to something, right? Just like how we're slaves to something, we're serving something. Someone's our father, right? It's either God or it's the other guy, you know, like that Jesus talked about in John 8 with the Pharisees. We don't want him anymore as our father, you know? And, um, but basically what he's saying is, is, is that you're going to conform. So you're going to be molded into something. So the question really becomes, well, first of all, why does God, why does God hate the idea of us being conformed to the world? Why are there so many warnings against that? And I was kind of just alluding to this too, but I think it's because the world is run by the devil. Right. And it's like, that's something that I feel like we all know intellectually, but like, we don't really think about that often because it's, it is, it's, it's not intuitive, really, you know, especially if you're like optimistic, right? I mean, somebody who's optimistic and not a disciple, they would never like think that the world was run by the devil, no. you know, but it says like in first John five nineteen, he says that we know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Ooh, that's like chilling, right? And then like Revelation 12, nine, and the great dragon was thrown down the ancient serpent who was called the devil, Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. So they're saying that he's the deceiver of the whole world. Okay, so that means that we're really in the devil's playground right now. This is the enemy's territory. So just like how Jesus just showed up right now, all the demons are scared and Satan's flipping out. and every, That's what our presence should be like, right? We should be walking into a room and demons should be like, whoa. Right, because we're being transformed into the image of Jesus. We should we should be really rocking the boat just by our presence, right? And like that would be like the first question that I'd ask. Like, do you guys feel like when you're with unbelievers when you walk into your, to a room, do you feel like your presence is known that you're different? You know, and that's really what sanctification is. And like that's the more I meditate on it, it's that God wants us to be so separate. He wants us to stand out like a sore thumb. Okay, and like the thing is, it's like how do we do that? It says also by being. <laughs> It says by the renewal of your mind, All right. right? So what does that mean? And for one, I think that has to mean if the mind's involved, it has to have to do with the Bible, right? And the word of God, right? The word of God is what is what transforms us. And it's almost, it almost is like a brainwashing in a way, right? But, um, but it's like a good brainwashing, right? Yeah. You know, like I, like I used to be an AA for the first like five years of my sobriety, but now sober for seven and a half years. And I've been a disciple for three and a half years. But this lady used to say that in AA, she used to say her name was Pat, but she used to say that people thought AA was a cult, you know? And she said, because they, she said, you're getting brainwashed. They said, she said, well, you know, she said, my brain needs a little washing, you know? 
And that's kind of what it is. God's like, hey, because again, it's like, it's, and I know it just always gets reduced this, but it's like, you're going to be brainwashed to some degree or another, right? If we're conforming to the world, then we're going to be conforming to their ideology. And we're just going to be a puppet to whatever the world says, right? It's not really our own thoughts, right? Nothing's our own thought. It's, we just adapt and kind of get molded, right? So, so this is kind of the same thing. It's why not just fill it up with this kind of stuff, right? Because God, God wrote this for our benefit so we can be conformed. So that's one way of doing it. And then another is, um, is basically, I think it's our love for one another, Amen. you know? And I think that that is a, is a true testament to, like Jesus talks about that in John 13, um, 34 through 35, when he says a new commandment, I give you, you know, that you love one another um, as I have loved you. <laughs> So that the world may know that you are my disciples. So again, it's this is this is really standing out, right? Like if we're going out and we're actually loving one another, that's a te- that's a testimony, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and we were believers at this point when we entered the um, Potomac Valley Church of Christ. But as far as staying at a church, that is what sold us, right? Because we went to a fellowship um, event, and and I was like, oh my goodness, I was like, these people actually care about each other. You know, that impressed me more than any sort of like doctrine at that moment, because just seeing that, I think it's just, it's so different, you know, when you actually see people loving each other with no motive, right? And Paul says, even in in here in verse nine in in Romans 12, he says, let love be genuine, right? There's a tendency for love to not be genuine, especially in the world, right? I mean, what is, what is, what is, I I don't know about you, but my concept of love before I was a disciple was just totally warped. It was basically really money and gifts. Like, I mean, that's, I mean, and I love my parents, but that is how they showed their love to me. And they really did love me, but they showed it by gifts and things, you know? So as long as I got things, I felt loved. Um, And that, that got really, that was much less and less cute the older and older I got when I was still asking for gifts, you know, when I was past college age, you know, asking for... But I wanted that love, you know, I'm like, you used to give me gifts, keep giving me gifts, I want more, you know, it's, you regress. But, um, but then it also says in Romans 12, 9, it also says to abhor evil, right? So that's another way to really stand out against the world. And Ed was, Ed was kind of touching on this in Romans 1, right? When it said that, you know, not only were people doing these sinful acts, but they were approving of those who did them, yeah. right? And I think that things are a little bit backwards in the world, because, right, because again, if the devil's running things, everything somehow is going to be opposed to God, right? It could seem chaotic and why? Oh, oh, he's opposing God, right? I mean, it's really not that complex because that's really all the devil really has, right? All the devil really has is to just be counterfeit towards what, what, what God says this, he can try to negate it. He has no actual creative power. So when we see of the Bible saying, oh, this is good and this is bad, right? God's giving us that standard of living. If the world says the opposite, how are we to react? then right are we going to approve of the wickedness or are we going to stand down and say no i I don't god said something else actually the bible says something else you do that you're going to upset people right because again we have to ruffle feathers here and if people have their own if the world's kind of moving in a direction and we're opposing it even if it's as polite as possible it's going to shake feathers right and now back back to this idea of the sanctification and the love right I, i see a lot of communal stuff in this chapter. And I really think that sanctification is the most communal thing possible, right? Because I mean, that, that's really why we're in the, in the church, right? I think, I mean, once we, once we become believers, it's really to, to keep conforming to the image of God. So how, how could we be doing that? Like when Jesus says that he has a new commandment that, that you love each other, it's implied that you have to be with each other, yeah. right? There's no, <laughs> just an assumption. Right. He's saying, of course, you're going to be with each other. But yeah, you have to love each other a lot, too. You know, so we have to gather. We have to like call each other out, you know, and open rebuke is better than hidden love. We have to. But but again, we have to be critics, but not like an enemy. Right. And I heard some something. This is somebody else is saying this recently that I heard in the news or something or some podcast or something. But he said, like, the difference between like a critic and an enemy is like a critic actually has your best interest at heart. And like an enemy just wants you destroyed. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So like with us, it's like, there's never been anybody in the fellowship that's ever said anything to me that, that, that was of evil intent. Yeah. I can say that truly, you know, I mean, it's in, nor have I ever had evil intent towards anyone else in, in the church. And I think that this is really what keeps us, what keeps us plugged in and keeps us conforming because we need some measuring stick. And especially since the world is so opposite, it's like, if you're not surrounding yourself 
with the body, then how on earth would you not be conformed to the world? Uh, right? I mean, that's just the natural byproduct. Of course you're going to be. So that's like what the next question I would say is just like, when you're talking to people, like is your conversation mimicking the world more or like how we talk with each other? Right, because like we all put up on a good game when we're all together here, but like when we're, when we're in the other, like when we're in work and people are gossiping, like are we participating in that? Or are we kind of staying back? Because I don't know if you guys have noticed, but when people are gossiping and you refrain, it's very obvious that you don't approve of it. It is, yeah. Right? Because like I, I, mean, I used to have that before I was a <laughs> disciple too, where like I'd want to be like, hey, wasn't it? They're like, oh, geez, this person's not giving me anything. Like I'm really trying to, you know, get some gossip going. But just like, just kind of that, you know, but that's kind of the thing. And it's like, I feel like this is just, we, we 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 need to just stay together basically is is really what it is we have to stay together and we have to um we just have to go out and just show the world and I, and if we do this people will respond i'm going to give you an example okay so basically um okay so here's a big worldly concept right that's very prevalent is like premarital sex is very common in the world right it's just oh if you're dating if you're dating and you like each other, like, sure, that would be really weird if you didn't engage in that. Like people in our church would be perceived as weird, okay, to the world. They'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, so my buddy called me up about a year and a half ago, right? And he said to me, he said, um, hey, I've been dating this you know, girl on an app. And he's like, what do you think I should do? And now this started off with me sinning, by the way. So this is like partial confession, but then I did remedy it. Um, but like at first I was kind of nervous because I didn't want to sound like a loser, you know, like I didn't want him to think I was a loser. I was conforming to the world basically. So I, I started like, trying to act like cool and like saying like, oh, you know, like, yeah, man, like, and I was encouraging the behavior, you know, and I was actually like giving suggestions of like how he could like, you know, just like pick up lines or whatever, just, but I was definitely aiding and abetting it. Right. And then I got off the phone. I was just like, like felt very convicted. And I was just like, that like, wasn't, me like and I was just like I don't know what to do like and I started talking to Stephanie I was like what do I do and then we just decided I just had to just call him back so I called him back and I was like hey um Sean like I was like I was like you know when I just said all of that I was like I don't actually believe any of that <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was just trying to sound cool I was like I'm like a Christian now which I think you know like I don't believe in that I believe in marriage like between like one spouse like one husband and one wife and anything besides that, I would never participate in, nor do I accept that behavior. So I shouldn't be telling you to do something and encouraging you to do something that I don't even believe myself. You know what I mean? Why? So I was like, so I apologize. I was like, I apologize for that. And the thing is, the funny thing is, is that I was not doing this at all to preach the gospel. Um, I was just trying to like repent. Um, but like, he's somebody that I actually like, he's my best friend. So yeah, so basically, um, but I always wanted to preach the gospel and then this actually opened the door to that. Wow. Man. Now, this is actually also my best friend who passed away last year too, but we did, we did go through the Bible together. We started and we had like great conversations about God. And I don't know like what his um, like eternal fate was, but regardless, like, let's put it this way. I think that that time that we had together going through the Bible would have been very important and is very important to him now, probably compared to anything else. Right. He probably was like, well, that was the most important moment of my life, you know, and and but see, I and, and I was able to be at peace so much more with his death because I had that option. But if I never tried to take him through the Bible, like I would have really felt bad. And I felt like God like gave me that opportunity. But it was all based on the fact. You see what I mean? If I was just conforming to the world, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. You see what I mean? So like and, and I just feel like we, we have to. We have to stand out and and i think that that is more because the thing is people when they hear that you're religious too like i feel like they're really looking for mistakes right and i was talking to reese about this actually um and i feel like we were saying like this is reese's theory actually but i definitely agree with it but he was saying like he feels like for the last like thousand years it's been like a lot of hypocritical christians basically just giving christianity a, a bad name you know but now it's like starting to get a little pruned you know because it's not quite as cool anymore so now it's really our conduct that controls, you see? And we can really make ourselves known now. And I think if we do that, I think evangelism could actually be stronger than it's ever been. Exactly. I, I mean, that's what we conclude. And I really do believe that. So I think that this is gonna be very encouraging for all of us. Um, and basically I would just close with just saying that we just have to stay unified. We have to stay like sanctified together. We have to keep building each other up and growing, right?
and it says like don't don't be it says don't be haughty like it, that's the other thing too is basically he said don't be haughty associate with the lowly and then james in james too he talks about the sin of partiality that means no no clicks there's no social clicks yeah. right in church right so like that would be another question too like are you actually talking to people that you're the least likely wanting to talk to basically or is there anyone that you really don't want to talk to or are you talking to them or are you talking to the same five people like that you're comfortable with and myself too you know what i mean it's like it, there's no there god wants us out of our comfort zone right i mean so we just have to really we really have to like step it up but if we do it together i really think that just our mere presence we were talking about this even in a Bible study, like last week we were talking about preaching the gospel and then the idea of also preaching as communally was, was an idea too. And I was thinking like James and I, when James and I were taking Andrew through the Bible um, and I think Chance was there too, there were two people who just overheard us and then just came to midweek as a result of just hearing wow. us do that. You know what I mean? But like, that's just because we were out and about. And I think it was just like, we just have to, we have to actually hang out with each other and we have to actually love each other. And I think that this is just gonna be the start of an amazing chapter for all of us. And I'm just so glad that everyone's here who's here. It's starting to get filled up again. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm feeling very encouraged and very optimistic. Um, and uh, basically I'll just close in a prayer now. Heavenly Amen. Father, God, thank you so much for um, allowing me to preach again. And um, I just pray, please God, that we all just, that we do not conform to the world, God, but that you conform us to the image of, of your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And just please help us just show our love, God, and help us separate ourselves from the world, right? And just help us just really be a, a testament to you, God. Please help us, help, help us pique the interest of other people. Help us make, make our distinctions known. Help make us stand out in the world. Have people come up to us, God, and ask us, you know, what's different about us. And, and just please just help us continue to hang out and grow these relationships, God. Yes, it's all good in your son, Jesus's name. Thank you, God, amen. Yeah, and then amen. just, just yeah, and then if you wanna just, do you wanna do questions or what do you guys think? Yeah. All right, do we do small groups? I forgot, yeah, yeah. You're in charge, <laughs> I'd rather do a communal. Just give me a yeah or no. Or... Okay. All right, cool. Hey, peer pressure works. It actually says here too, it says outdo each other in showing honor, right? So peer pressure works. We're not being, it works. So let's do it. See, nobody wanted to do those small groups, but when we did it like that, communally, we're doing it. So essentially the question is going to be, you know, it, it individually or, you know, are you conforming to the world? or are you um, being transformed by the renewal and how does the church impact that in your life? Yes.